Well, hello. Uh, this is Ron Krisha, the uh, Chief Operating Officer at Golden Shovel Agency. I'm excited for the webinar today with Navigate, and I'll be introducing our two participants in just a minute. But for those that are just logging in, I'm going to give you another minute or two. Uh, we have quite a, a large registration list. And so I, at this time, I, I tell people, grab yourself a refill of your coffee and, and settle in. Um, but we'll start the, the broadcast in full earnest in about one and a half minutes. All right, again, this is Ron Kreischer from Golden Shovel Agency. Uh, just wanna welcome everyone to leveraging supply chain technology to keep businesses growing. Uh, fantastic webinar, and I'll be introducing our two participants, but a couple of housekeeping items before we, we launch in. Uh, everyone, I'm sure, is used to being on uh, life on Zoom, so if you have questions, just send those in through the chat or using the Q&A module. And I'll be watching for those questions and I'll, I'll feed those into our two presenters. Um, and again, want to thank everyone for joining uh, our webinar series. These continue to be very popular and get rave reviews. And so with that, I'm going to introduce our two participants from Navigate. Um, Joe Pelletier is the founding partner of Navigate. He started the supply chain industry 20 plus years ago as a licensed customs broker and still feels it's one of the best ways to learn about the industry. He moved on to spend 10 years in sales and another eight in senior management. And as president, he sees uh, and oversees all navigates branches worldwide leads in technology strategy. So Joe, if you could say hi, so we can get your voice. Hello. Hello. Excited to be here today. It sounds like there might be a little bit of an echo. So we got an echo here. Is that better? That sounds a little better. Okay. Okay. And then Shannon Olson started her career in logistics as a customs entry writer working for Global Transportation, uh, working at Navigate in the same role in 2006 and managing customs brokerage teams and then the Minneapolis St. Paul branch. Uh, moved to the vice president sales role in 2019. And Shannon, if uh, you want to say hello so we can get your voice. Didn't hear Shannon. Did we lose Shannon and Joe? Sorry. Is that... <laughs> there we go. And it sounds like there's a little bit of feedback, so I don't know if that's uh, coming through your sound, but uh, we'll just manage through it. So Shannon, are you there? Yep, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Very good. Um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you, Joe and Shannon. Sorry about and... that, guys. We're trying to get this uh, figured out from here. Okay. Does that sound better? It does sound a little better. There's a little bit of reverb yet. Okay. How's that? There we go. Is that better? Yeah, that yeah. works. Okay. Great. Sorry about the technical nope. glitch here. Life online. So Joe and Shannon, uh, you're going to open up the world of supply chain and the importance of how that makes communities competitive. I'm not going to say any more because uh, I will then get over my skis and, and, and wade into waters that are too deep for me. So all yours. Well, we're excited to be here today. Uh, again, I'm Joe Pelletier, president of Navigate. 
uh, extensive background in supply chain logistics, uh, kind of from the very beginning on, you know, just the basic freight forwarding and customs brokerage and getting involved in international trade all the way through to, you know, starting a technology company that works closely with our customers to kind of get deeper into their supply chain and add a competitive advantage for our customers uh, using the supply chain as a competitive tool. My background as well, growing up in the Midwest, I know, you know, Shannon and I both kind of had unique experience growing up in a smaller town in rural Minnesota, coming to the Twin Cities, but also working extensively with companies throughout the Midwest from the Dakotas, Nebraska, Iowa, Wisconsin, this whole region and talking to customers and kind of getting a better understanding of their needs and uh, you know, what that fit looks like for companies with a modern supply chain. Shannon. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, uh, starting out in this business, customs brokerage has kind of always been something that has been near and dear to my heart, getting involved with logistics uh, further on in the freight world. And then also now with technology, we just love to work with companies, uh, small companies and big companies, just to talk about, you know, how we can help them with their supply chains. And so I think you can really help smaller companies, especially if they've kind of got that, you know, leading edge to be able to figure out how to move, keep their products moving. So we're excited to be here today. All right, great. So we'll go along next. As, as a company, uh, we're kind of a unique hybrid. Uh, Navigate as a company, not a you know, sales pitch for Navigate, but ultimately it's uh, our company, as, as I mentioned, started off as a freight forwarder. One of our brands is a company called North Star World Trade Services. That started over 50 years ago. So one of the longest tenured freight forwarder and logistics companies in the Midwest. And, you know, through that uh, experience, uh, another company spun off called International Software Associates, which is the kind of the precursor to the company, which is now rolled up as Navigate. And in that, in that mode and working with our customers through those years, it started with being able to just transmit documents and using you know, the web and other tools to do a better job of giving companies visibility. And it's evolved into much deeper platform, which is companies actually going deeper in their supply chain, communicating and using the supply chain as a competitive advantage. As we've grown, where we started in the Midwest, we've branched out into uh, China and Shanghai. We've grown across the Midwest into areas like Kansas City and Houston and Los Angeles with a, and also a very large facility in Chicago. So we continue to you know, broaden our footprint, but at the heart of it is just working extensively with our customers and you know, using technology and our own technology company as kind of the tip of the spear for how we approach our customers and what they do. Shannon, I know, you know, from her perspective, just working in the company as well, one of the early adopters to use that tool for operations as well. Yeah, I mean, I think it's been extremely helpful for us internally. We use the software to help us manage our um, customers every day. And so seeing uh, just a wide range of clients and how um, having a technology to help them manage their day-to-day -day operations I mean, we've really seen it, especially right now during COVID-19. It's been extremely important for many of our clients to be able to work um, from any place. And so making sure that you've got that digital supply chain can be extremely helpful right now. Um, and so we love just helping our clients, um, you know, put the pieces together to make sure that they have everything they need to be able to do so. All right. So we look at, you know, just leveraging the supply chain to level the playing field. You know, we know we work with companies, you know, from very small companies up to, you know, very large companies, but we do know, and through our experience, we've seen that if you really put an emphasis on building a world-class supply chain and understanding what that looks like in today's day and age, you can actually outmaneuver and compete head on with any of the largest companies out there, you know, for a company to be able to access tools to you know help a small business to grow sustainably and compete head on with large supply chains is important for us and it's kind of been a, a thesis that we've built our technology around and you know we've gone deeper and deeper into the supply chain so we'll talk about that and touch on you know how does it help companies how does it help communities to grow so we have a number of examples we'll touch into as well
I know the coronavirus has been on, uh, you know, I, I, you know, doing webinars, a lot of these Zoom meetings. This has been a pretty common theme for everybody. Uh, you know, maybe and Shannon, you could touch on just even the impact of our own operation and what our, you know, technology has done for us. Well, yeah, like I had mentioned previously, it's been great for all of our employees. We've been we've been working from home really since kind of early March when things kind of got crazy with coronavirus. Um, we've been able to do that because we have a technology that allows us to see all of the shipments for all of our clients. And so regardless of how big or small you are, everybody's faced with kind of the same challenges right now. If you're a bigger company, you might have bigger problems. Smaller company, your problems might be smaller, but they might be impacting your business even more. So having um, the tools that you need to be able to do um, your job from home is something that's very helpful. Um, and so just being able to do that through this and who knows what could come down the pike. You know, they talk in Minnesota about a second wave. I know we have a lot of people on this call today that are from other states, but you know, we really give you the flexibility to do your job, um, regardless of if it's domestic freight, um, managing your partners and your vendors, all of that can really be done um, if you have a supply chain that's digital, so. Yeah, we look at just the pandemic and the impact it's had, uh, you know, obviously you can see the numbers uh, you know, we just even look at our own customers and their drop in sales, but everybody's starting to open up now and having visibility, having uh, technology to leverage and just understand where the footprint of your supply chain is and be able to use that as a competitive advantage. I think the coronavirus for many in international anyway, kind of hit twice. And right. Yeah, uh, you know, the, the first round was China uh, and the impact it had on that. I know, you know, Shannon, I know we had a number of customers that were impacted from that. Yeah, I mean, we've definitely seen, you know, in January and February, things were very slow because the factories um, in China were not, you know, working. And so we saw a, a big slowdown there. Our clients here were not able to get their goods produced. Um, so just being able to really help them determine if they wanted to use air freight to get their freight in. And then once it arrives in the U.S. as well, just working with our clients to make sure that they're aware all the time where their freight is, um, where their products are, so that they can get them delivered the most economically um, way possible and so they can hit deadlines as well. Um, our software is one that, regardless of the size of your company, we grow with companies, and that's been, I think, probably the biggest thing that, regardless of your size, we can help you do that. So. Yeah, the, the pandemic, hopefully uh, we're, we see uh, brighter days ahead, but definitely an impact and unfortunately a, a, a two-tier impact. So, you know, with that, uh, we can move on. You know, one of the things, in, in, you know, I kind of laugh with Shannon and as we've gone through this, uh, I, you know, just to back up a little bit, Shannon and I, we've worked together for at least, what, 10, 15 years? 15. Yeah, 15 years or so. and. You know, it's interesting, supply chains typically have been deprioritized in, in a company. And uh, that may have been the case 15 years ago. It certainly was a, something that we experienced quite a bit, but now it's getting to be more and more of the forefront because it really is a competitive advantage. Uh, you know, we're talking about stuff like trade war and everything else that's going on and having a firm management and a tool to be able to understand, hey, where is my supply chain located? Where are my goods? Where am I producing product? Uh, you know, am I maximizing my benefit uh, from the supply chain? It used to be just a cost center. While it's still a cost center, it certainly can be a competitive advantage cost center. And you know, I, I, I know early on it was you know very small groups, but now it's becoming more of a focus on companies. I know you've witnessed that yourself, Shannon. Correct. We have definitely. I think you know. Some of the smaller businesses sometimes feel like they might not be getting the best um, service from their vendors. And so if we can really help be that middle person to help you make sure that your vendors are, you know, keeping things on track for you and doing the best that they can do for you, um, that's a key part of what we want to do. I think during, you know, crisis like that we have currently, it's really good to make sure that all of your partners are um, doing their best and doing what they can to make your supply chain work the best that it can. Yeah, in fact, one of our one of my partners, uh, he came to us and he started with a small logistics company. But prior to that, he was in a lighting business, and I think many people can kind of relate. Um, you know, the the industry shifted where it used to be uh, lighting companies were purchased at all of these small 
lighting companies around the, the country and then the Home Depots and, and Menards and Walmarts and the larger companies started kind of gobbling up the market share. And that pivot on the supply chain for a company like that was critical. And you can see that as, you know, from our perspective, when we're dealing with companies and looking at their supply chain, seeing those macro trends, having visibility of what's going on in the industry, and then also understanding, you know, what is the impact on trade agreements and impact on port strikes and all of these little things that can be hiccups, they can really be refined if you have visibility and a strong management. So along those lines, it's, it's something that when we talk about technology and what it means for economic development and what it looks like for companies and in trying to prioritize what their future is, you know, finding that balance between, you know, getting the right tools, understanding how much you should spend on getting the right tools, and then what that impact can be is a critical uh, decision for any company right now. All right, we can move on. So one, one thing that we've run into a lot, and we're hopefully seeing it less than less, but you know, typically companies are you know, manufacturers or they're distributors, and they're purchasing goods either domestically or you know, certainly internationally, and the first step is usually trying to get that landed cost. How much is it going to be to produce the product? And how much is it going to cost for me to import it or bring it into my facility? And, you know, we see this as an area of massive opportunity for our customers when we talk to them. I can't tell you how many times we've walked into a customer and seen what they're actually paying for goods. And, you know, it's baked into the price that they're getting. But then when they identify what their true cost should be, it's a very big eye opener. I know you've had a number of those examples, Shannon. Yeah, we have. We have clients, especially with the duty rates and the different changes, but even just with shipping costs, you know, we've got clients that they don't really understand, um, you know, the true cost of their products. Once they add the different charges from, um, you know, their different providers, the freight fees, even moving it domestically, packaging, we see all kinds of tooling things where product is not, you know, uh, the tooling costs are more than what our customers thought they were. So just being able to really dig deep into um, your supply chain with your manufacturers, your partners, your vendors, just so that you all are on the same, the same page. Um, that gives you the ability to make the decisions based on the products. Do you want to continue to have these products in your stores or do you want to continue to, you know, grow a certain line of your business? Um, it, it makes, it helps you to make better business decisions for your companies. Certainly on the international end, I know you've got a number of these examples as well, Shannon, when you're buying products from, you know, foreign markets, especially in the era of trade wars and high duty and everything else, uh, by paying for those goods and the cost to move those goods, you're actually paying duty on that freight. And that is actually not dutiable. So those are examples of areas where better visibility, better management and using tools can really help refine your landed cost. And, you know, that's an area obviously we'll cover uh, down the line here as well is identifying the true cost of your goods to make better decisions even at the retail level as well. Yeah, and I think really just, I think the main thing too is making sure that you can really manage your vendors, whether your partners are in the US or whether your partners are in another country. Just making sure that everybody's on the same page and making sure they're following compliance rules if you have different things that you're looking for. Um, having a technology that can help you do that is extremely helpful. Great, can move on. All right, so supply chain visibility, you know, having a platform, this is an area that's evolved extensively in the last five to 10 years. I know, you know, early on, just being able to track and monitor shipments, similar just going into any portal for any provider or carrier, that was kind of the, the you know, the start or the infancy of where, you know, supply chain visibility started. And now, you know, understanding that there's multiple providers that are important to build a healthy supply chain and being able to gather the data from multiple uh, sources. It might include, you know, vendors overseas, uh, steamship lines, airlines, uh, you know, domestic trucking companies, warehouses. The more you can pull this together and communicate with your own ERP system internally, the better your supply chain and the more you can actually use the supply chain as a weapon. 
the sooner that you can really dig in and uh, see what's happening in your supply chain, uh, the better opportunity you have to mitigate some of the volatile situations like we're in now. Um, I think it's very helpful. It, it helps you to make your decisions earlier. Um, you can really react quicker. Some of our clients um, have said that when they start using uh, Navigate, they can see the iceberg before they hit it. It allows them to actually make the changes that they need to make um, in order to get their product where it needs to be and when it needs to be there. Many of our clients, they're not the end um, client. They have to then ship it out and they use our services for that as well. They can really keep an eye on everything that's happening from really you know, the beginning of their supply chain to the very end. Yeah, you know, we, we talk about just, you know, what a visibility platform looks like, but, you know, from the very infancy of a purchase order, you know, it, it, it all scales, you know, uh, commerce begins by saying you want to order something. So the, you know, the start of a purchase order and having visibility and then going one step further and being able to actually get better data and analytics around that and understanding where your product is being produced and then understanding, hey, if we're changing the, the footprint of where we're purchasing, what does that do to impact our land at cost? All of these are, are careful considerations that you know, modern companies are looking at, not to mention the fact that when you have a, a visibility and technology in your supply chain, you can you know, uh, manage your costs on uh, you know, employees, number of employees it takes to actually manage your supply chain as well. So we look at a number of ways that we can help companies, um, you know, lower their costs to actually manage their supply chain, but also do a better job of identifying their true costs when they're trying to come up with their pricing and, you know, what they're trying to produce. So. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. I think one of the things that's, you know, so important is when you look at a technology, it shouldn't just be something where you've got a bunch of data. It should be a collaboration tool. You should be collaborating with your partners, collaborating with your employees. Everybody should kind of, it gives you, allows you the ability to be, everyone's on the same page. Um, so one single version of the truth is what we like to call it here. Um, it just gives everybody that ability to collaborate together, um, whether it be your partners, like I said, your employees. Um, it's, it, it really is something that can help give you that competitive advantage as we've talked about in this, on this call. All right, great. All right. So how do you grow with an efficient supply chain? It seems kind of, uh, you know, contradictory, but in the end, you know, understanding, you know, even from an economic development standpoint, you know, we have a number of examples, but I even go back just historically and working with a company out of Alexandria, Minnesota. So, you know, small rural location, um, you know, they, they saw an opportunity around the rollerblades in areas like that, uh, identified a company in Taiwan that could help produce and the tooling to actually get started. And, the, you know, we work closely with them to identify what that supply chain looks like. And it, it was a fun success story to see a company from two, three, four, five people grow into over 100 people. And just you know, from the very beginning, understanding the implications of what that supply chain looks like as they extended beyond the border of the United States. And to do that, having visibility and having tight management and controls was imperative for them. And you know, anytime you start that process, you know, building a good partnership, building the right and, and putting together the right resources is critical. And you know, we work with a number of companies that it's fun witnessing that growth as they identify opportunities and help scale. Yeah, I mean, our favorite, our favorite thing here is watching our customers grow and we can, our software allows us to really grow with them. Whether they have five shipments a month or 200 shipments a month, um, our technology really gives them the ability to manage um, all of their vendors and their carriers. Um, it's really a system that works for everyone and um, it just allows that deep dive into the supply chain with your partners and your and your clients as well yeah let me add one more thing in this area too you know we look at the world-class supply chains a ford motor company or a gm you know obviously companies like that supply chain is critical for everything they do they're they're manufacturing around the world they've got suppliers and vendors everywhere and ultimately you know the tools they use are quite robust and quite expensive. Uh, you know, typically a company that 
is trying to compete head on with those companies. If they want those types of world-class tools, they're looking at an expense of well over a million dollars annually to just put those types of tools, you know, at their, at their ready. But ultimately, as technologies evolved, those same tools that allow companies to compete head on are now becoming more pay as you go and much less expensive. So you can build world-class supply chain tools without having that initial investment. And I know that's been a very, very big point of emphasis from not only our company, but companies that are looking to compete head on with companies like that. Yeah, it really does give you the ability if you can pay as you go, kind of, and per shipments, it's much easier for some of the smaller companies to really be able to compete with the larger ones. You've got the same visibility that they have, um, but your costs aren't as expensive as theirs. And so it oftentimes it works out really well for our smaller clients. Um, they get kind of the same the same things to help them manage their supply chain that the larger companies do, and it really allows you to be competitive with them. Well, as a business owner myself, I know, I think I can relate to everybody on the call. We're looking at economic development and just the impact of cash and constraints on cash flow and being able to leverage tools that put you on par with the biggest competitors without having to you know, invest that critical capital, especially at a time when you're growing uh, is just, you know, a very important piece. So know that there are tools out there that allow you to compete head on, but maybe don't require the initial cash outlay that uh, becomes, uh, you know, detrimental for companies that are just starting up. All right, we can go ahead. So supply chain technology um, really does help you to manage the disruptions. Um, that's, that's the big thing. You know, everybody talks about that. We've had some major disruptions this year. It started with, well, it started last year with some of the tariff wars and the trade wars that we had. Additional duties um, and taxes on products that clients were used to not having any duty on. Uh, furniture, for example, uh, they have seen an ex a huge increase in the cost of their goods due um, because of the duties. So having um, a good technology to help you manage that is really useful. Um, I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with it, but now some of those increased duties have kind of been dialed back. And so clients are needing to make sure they know exactly what they did last year so that they can better plan for this year um, and next year as well. They're able to really keep an eye on the history of their shipments, the history of their products. They've got a deep um, level of understanding of the product and what the costs were. Um, so just being able to really manage some of those disruptions. Of course, we've got port strikes, rail strikes, you know, um, different kinds of things that will impact weather. Um, you know, that can be a huge disruption. So we really can help um, all of our clients manage those disruptions. And finding a partner that can help you do that is huge, especially if you are smaller and you're dependent on these, these few shipments. Um, just making sure that you know where those things are, having those that team of experts on your side will be very useful. Well, let me give a you know real concrete example as well. As we're doing or you know understanding this trade war, and a lot of companies, you know, five, 10, 15 years ago had moved all their manufacturing to China, and now as that's you know ultimately a decision that's impacting companies quite a bit. Many companies weren't able to pivot immediately as you'd expect, and the technology to be able to understand you know, what, it, what is the impact of switching your supply chain to maybe domestic or to other regions? And what does that look like? And furthermore, you know, most companies can't pivot in a day and those trade war and trade tariffs and everything else can hit immediately. And because of that, uh, you know, many of our customers are left with paying high duty and without tools to be able to track past shipments and be able to quickly determine whether there is ability to capture some of those duties that have been paid. And I know, you know, we have numerous examples of our companies now that have petitioned and have found ways to actually get duty back. And in some cases over a million dollars and being able to leverage a technology and a tool to be able to identify all your products that are eligible, be able to efficiently and quickly, you know, uh, do these protests and put, you know, this information in the hands of customs so you can ultimately get those refunds is critical. And, you know, having a technology as a backbone has sped that 
process up just immeasurably. I know we have a number of examples of, you know, current clients that, um, you know, they've processed well over a million dollars in refunds and they're starting to actually hit. And at a time that we're going through right now, getting those types of reimbursements back is, is critical. And I know they're more than happy right now. Yeah, they are definitely, this is, I think some of the, some of our clients are seeing that these exclusions and the money that they're getting back from customs has allowed them to keep their staff on and they can kind of weather the storm right now, of slow sales um, and some of those other challenges that they're facing during this time. So it's, it can be extremely useful if you've got that history in there and you know, you know what has happened over the last year. It's easy for you to pinpoint those things if you've got the right technology. And I would also say just having like a group of people who are really good at, um, you know, making sure that the people that you're working with understand the rules and the regulations, because there's a lot of them this year. And I think that just having the right people in your corner that are going to go to bat for you and help you get these exclusions back is very important. Yeah. And I think, you know, just even as we, you know, near the end, you know, I can see that we have a number of regional centers and, and locations that are, are in this call. And, you know, even in my own career, working in the past with, you know, cities like Sioux Falls and other areas around the Midwest, you know, identifying opportunities for them to become hubs and, you know, understanding that, you know, as they partner, not necessarily with technology companies per se, but understanding the impact on, you know, having a free trade zone established or, you know, having critical infrastructure for, you know, railheads or, you know, uh, you know, highway infrastructure and warehousing and those types of things. Those are all the tools to help companies grow and understand that, you know, hey, supply chains are diverse. They can be, you know, a collection of international and domestic. And the more these regions can help accommodate, uh, you know, the ever changing environment of what these supply chain, you know, companies are needing, uh, the better it is for everybody involved. And we've seen some really cool growth in some of these regional centers because they put an emphasis on, you know, looking what, uh, you know, or understanding what infrastructure is needed to help support these companies. And, uh, you know, for us, that's always been something that, you know, we've been passionate about. And then, you know, from our angle, understanding that on the technology side, being able to add that layer and that element to the fold as well. Yeah, I mean, really, we see a lot over the last year, I think there's really been an increase for people to see the analytics of their shipments, like dig deep into that, see what the costs are. Um, it's important for everybody, regardless of the size of your company. Um, these are some of the things that are helping the, our clients really get through these disruptions. The fact that they can look at their supply chain and know exactly what they need to improve um, so that they can have more consistency and they can provide a, a, a product to their customer timely because that's what's really the, the end goal is to be able to provide what you have sold to your clients timely. The things that you need in your stores, um, we want to make sure that we get them there. And, you know, you want to be able to, when things open up and start moving again, we want to make sure that we've got, you know, full shelves and, and stock that's, uh, that's on its way. So um, just having that visibility is super helpful. Yeah. So Shannon and Joe, um, yeah. we got a couple questions coming in, which is good. Uh, the first one that I have for you, is how have you helped customers manage risks, especially now with the shutdowns causing decreased demand and trade war developments? Well, you know, that it's interesting because, you know, you know, when you're looking at, you know, that could go a number of ways uh, when you're looking at risk. Is it, you know, risk in just, you know, having too much stock? Is it risk in, you know, just even the compliance with the trade war in understanding, you know, where duties are, you know, I, I'd be interested to understand, you know, what risk, but I know from, you know, if, if I take the, the too much stock on hand, you know, when we look at technology and what it does for companies, understanding, okay, how much money do I have wrapped in my supply chain that's in transit or how much do I have in production? And I think there's always been traditionally a gaping hole for companies to really understand where is the product. Uh, you know, a company will issue a purchase order traditionally, and then there's just this black hole of information from that time you issue the purchase order to when this product's actually produced. And to me, I see that as tremendous risk because, you know, as we're looking at companies in COVID-19 and other areas like that, 
you know, factories don't just turn on a dime. So if you stop the purchase order or stop the production, it doesn't mean they can immediately start up again. And for, you know, some of these companies, there's tremendous risk in understanding that, hey, you know, I may not have product or how much product do I have? And it's an area that, you know, getting more tools, building technology that can go deeper in the supply chain so you can get visibility is critical. It isn't just about freight. It's really about the deeper, uh, you know, supply chain instance of when products are produced, when they're ready, and when they're uh, actually moving. I think it just, I mean, one of the biggest risks I think right now for us that we see is clients trying to determine, sh you know, what, how should they ship product, whether it's coming internationally or whether it's domestically, how quickly do they need it? Where is their freight? Is there freight that's stuck someplace and they need to maybe get hotshot trucks to get the shipments to their location faster? Um, it just really allows them the ability to make good decisions um, so that they, it might cost more, but it might be worth it because it's going to arrive sooner. So if they have visibility, they can do that. They can make that decision. I hope that answers it. But if, uh, if not, we'd be happy to take another stab at it as well. Great. Any other questions? I do. I have one other one. For a company that has never used supply chain technology, how do you adopt it without overwhelming employees with changes and new tools? <laughs> yeah, you know, that's, you know, we, we face that ourselves as we talk to companies. I mean, it happens every day for us, which is, you know, hey, how are we going to get started with a company and what does it look like? And in the end, you know, it really isn't as difficult as one might expect. Um, you know, you can start small and you can continue to grow and evolve the technology as you grow as well. And I think as simple as just being able to log in and track and manage shipments that are actually in transit, that's a great spot. No different than logging into a FedEx site, that type of thing. But then also looking at tools like, you know, we have a, a, a product called Trade Key, which allows you to, you know, initiate purchase orders and share them with vendors domestically and internationally. So you can start getting visibility and you can start managing compliance. Uh, you know, for us, it isn't just about technology. It's also about compliance for our companies as well. How do companies do business with you? And when we talk to companies and start with them, it usually starts small, but they can grow into the process. I know, you know, obviously it's not a, you know, a navigate uh, you know, centered conversation, but, you know, for a company like us and other companies, it's taking those companies, we have customer service, customer success teams that just help them log in, start building views and start, you know, maybe taking what they've done in the past and recreating it in technology. And that ends up being real, uh, you know, positive for them. I know you've got a number of examples where you've walked into customers and just duplicated the spreadsheets that they've done. Right. I mean, and that's, that's one of the good things too, to keep in mind when you're when you're talking to different technology companies is making sure that you're not getting just a box technology. You want to find one that can really um, kind of work with your business today, the way that it is, help you to improve that business, but also make it really easy for you um, to be able to uh, assimilate into the system and really work day, work all of your operations within the technology. Yeah. And I, you know, the other thing I would touch on in, it can seem overwhelming. You know, we, we work with companies that are starting with QuickBooks or, you know, small accounting systems that are kind of the backbone of their, you know, resource planning tools. Those are, you don't abandon those tools. You continue to work with that. You still need your accounting. You still need, you know, the, the, the tools that help you manage your business day to day, but you want to have additive things like a technology and supply chain that can, can layer in, and give you that visibility and give you that data and analytics to kind of help those tools become better as well. So, you know, we've, we've, I can't tell you how many times we started with companies that are starting with QuickBooks and now they're on Oracle, you know, as they've gone through their development, you know, into SAP and do other, you know, uh, you know, great planes, so many great tools out there for companies to manage their ERP. And we've witnessed their changes and their evolution along the way. But then again, the consistency has been a, a technology to help manage the supply chain. It doesn't need to change that end of it. Great. Anything else you want to add on that too, Shannon? Or? No, I don't think so. All right. Well, you know, if there's uh, no other questions, we appreciate everyone taking the time. Yeah. So I don't have any other questions. I guess the, the thing that I would offer up is, um, 
many of the people that we talk to are, are economic developers or chamber of commerce people. How do we help them talk about your solution to their membership? Yeah, you know, we, you know, certainly, you know, they can, you know, we leave obviously with this, uh, you know, the ability to reach out to us and we can have those conversations. But more than that, you know, we talk to companies that are, you know, maybe looking at expand their supply chain or going to other areas. It just starts with a simple conversation, you know, uh, and we're happy to have them. We've done it many times and it's fun because we've witnessed so many companies that start from very small to very large. Uh, we work with a company in California right now that, you know, you know, we started with very small, <laughs> very, very small doing some sporting goods. And today they're in every Dick's, every uh, Sam's club, every Walmart across the United States. And they're a, you know, billion dollar corporation and seeing that type of growth and working with customers for that type of success has been a lot of fun. And, you know, for us, and as you're talking economic development uh, regions and groups, you know, it's, it's basically just telling people that it doesn't matter where you're located. Uh, the example of the company we're talking about was in Painesville where they started. So, you know, geography uh, becomes almost irrelevant when you have tools and, you know, having that understanding and knowing that, you know, we're in these regions, uh, we can absolutely help impact all of these companies. And, you know, we're not the only one, but understanding that there are tools out there that can really level a playing field uh, across the country. Okay, excellent. Well, I'll leave it at this. Um, first of all, thank you. Great presentation. And I'll let you leave with two uh, points of information. A, what's the ideal client that you look for that you can help? And B, how do people get a hold of you? Well, we have it on the, the site here. So they, we, we left our email and certainly you can go to our website, which is uh, navigate.com. Uh, I'd like to remind people that we just didn't know how to spell maybe when we started navigate, but <laughs> <laughs> it is with an E. So, uh, you know, your spell checker may, uh, you know, tell you otherwise, but uh, www.navigate.com -E and, you know, certainly get information there. And individually, our emails are included as well. And yeah, yeah I, I also forgot the, the ideal client. You know, for us, there really isn't a, a client too small. And certainly, we, we work with companies that are doing just regional domestic all the way up to, you know, multi-global. You know, ideally, our clients aren't the, you know, GM boards that level. Uh, we work with many regional companies that are just trying to get a better handle on their supply chain. So companies from, you know, five, 10 employees all the way up to a thousand or 2000. That's pretty typical. We work with retailers, manufacturers, we have clients, you know, we have a wide range of clients. So. Yeah, agriculture, I mean, I, you know, I was just interested, you know, we, we talk about exports and you know, the impact of what's going on right now with the trade wars as well. And, you know, just understanding that there are tools even for the exporter. We've been doing uh, some interesting pilot programs to pair exporters with importers to lower their costs as well. So again, you know, typically any company uh, that kind of fits that size threshold and is involved in any level of logistics is our ideal client. All right. Well, fantastic. Well, I want to thank everyone and Joe and Shannon. Thank you very much. I'm glad we overcame our technical difficulties and look forward to sending some interested folks your way. I appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the golden shovel group. Thank you. <laughs>